Hi everyone, welcome back. This is another Module 3 activity. This is the end of Module activity. The scenario is we are working for a company called Hardy Fit Tools and we're working on a spreadsheet that focuses on their inventory. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Again, similar to the other activity, the first step we want to do here is go to the orders worksheet and then we're going to change the name of the spreadsheet. We're going to do that by double clicking on this. And we're going to change the name to orders and inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. Okay, step one down. Next, for step two, we're going to unfreeze the top two cells. So we see when we scroll up and down, the top two, top two rows are frozen. So we're going to unfreeze those by going to the view tab on the ribbon. Then we're going to go over here to the windows group and find this freeze panes button. We're going to click on that and choose unfreeze. Now we see that they're no longer frozen. They don't come with us when we scroll down. The second part of question number two, it wants us to middle align, middle align the contents of A1. So I'm going to click on A1, and then I'm going to go home tab on the ribbon. I'm going to find the alignment group and find the button that says middle align. For part three, or step three, we're going to cut the contents. So we're going to cut using the keyboard shortcut, control X. So we're going to select K2, use the keyboard shortcut Control X, then we're going to go over here to A2, and we're going to press Enter. So we just cut the contents of K2, put them in A2, and then in B2, we're going to use a now function. So we're going to type in equals, and then N-O-W, and we see that the now function is in the top of our list. We'll press Tab to select it. We don't have to do anything else with this function. We just press Enter. Step number four has a few parts to it. We're going to grab the range A3 through A9, and we're going to merge and center this whole section. So A3 through A9, home tab, alignment group, merge and center button. Home tab, alignment group, merge and center button. Go ahead and click on that. I see we made that big cell there. Next, we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. So I'm going to right click on it, go down here to format cells in this menu. We get this dialog box that pops up. We want to click the alignment tab right here. Once we've clicked on the alignment tab, we're going to go over here to the orientation section. And we're just going to rotate this 90 degrees. So we see that we have 90 degrees there. And you can also just type it in down there, whichever you prefer. Then we click OK. You see our text has been rotated 90 degrees. Then we're going to change the width of column A. I'm going to do this by putting my mouse over column A, over the, the name right there. And then I'm going to right click and go to column width. And I'm just going to type in the number that I want there, which in this case is 5. And then OK. OK, for step 5, we're going to copy the formatting from the range B5 through K5 and apply that format to B7 through K7. So I'm going to go over here and highlight B5 through K5. So we have that range highlighted. And I'm going to go to Home tab, Clipboard group, where we have this range selected. Probably the better verbiage there. We go Home tab, Clipboard group, and we click the Format Painter button. I click that Format Painter button, Home tab, Clipboard group, click on it. We see that we get the marching ants around there, and then I get a little paintbrush by my mouse. So when I go down here to B7, if I left click, hold, and swipe straight across to K7, so just B7 to K7, when I release, it will copy that formula or format from there and apply it here. I'm going to go up here to the Home tab and then the Alignment group. And we see just right here, we have a Decrease Indent and Increase Indent button. We're going to click on the Decrease Indent button one time. We see that it fixed the indentation for this line right here. The next part is it wants us to go down here from uh, C26 to G26 wants us to highlight that, copy it, and paste it up into the range C8 through G8. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to highlight C6 or C26 through G26. C26 through G26. I'm going to press Control C on the keyboard. I'm going to go up here and select the range C8 through G8. C8 through G8. And then I'm going to right click and go to this little flyout menu that says paste special. If we just hover our mouse over that, this little menu will pop out and we're going to look for paste values. So we're just going to click paste values.
The reason we wanted that option is because if we just copied this and pasted it over um, like regular, what would happen is it would destroy the formatting for our table. So I'm going to go ahead and press escape and that should get rid of the marching ants right there. Then we're going to, the last step for this question is we're going to delete row 26. So I'm just going to right click over here on the row 26, just over here on the far, um, far left there, right click, and I'm going to choose delete. Okay, for question number seven, we're going to click on cell C11. So we're going to go down here to C11, and we're going to use Goal Seek to set this to a value of 300 by changing cell C7. So let's go ahead and do that. We go to the data tab on the ribbon. So again, first we select cell C11, data tab on the ribbon. We slide over here to the what if analysis button in the forecast group, and we will choose the option Goal Seek. So again, we have our three questions here. Set what cell, the cell, to a value of what? 300 by changing, and we said that would be cell C7. So we should have set, set cell C11 to a value of 300 by changing cell C7. And then we click OK. Takes a second to calculate, and then we go ahead and click OK. And that is done. Okay, question number eight. There's a lot of steps to this one. The first thing we're going to do is insert spark lines. So we're going to go to cell H4. Then we're going to go to the insert tab on the ribbon. And then we're going to slide over to the spark lines group and we're going to choose the line option. So again, since we selected the cell beforehand, that should be filled in automatically and we just need to put in the data range. So we make sure our selector is in here. And then we are going to select the cell range C4 through G4. So it should be C4 through G4. Then we just click OK. Then we go ahead and grab this fill handle and drag that down to cell H9. Then we want to make sure to click the autofill options and choose fill without formatting. Otherwise, it's going to break the style of our table. So we choose fill without formatting. Okay, next we're going to change the color of the sparkline. So let's go ahead and click on the sparklines. We see we get the sparkline tab up here on the ribbon. So let's go up here to the sparkline tab. Go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to find this section here, sparkline color. Go ahead and click on that. And the color we're going to choose is gold accent 6, 25% darker. It will be the 10th column, 5th row. Should be the 10th column, 5th row. Then we're going to go ahead and add markers. We do that over here in the show group, and we just click on markers, and this should add markers for every month. Then we're going to change the color of the markers using this button right here. Let's go ahead and click on marker color. Then we're going to go down here to markers, and we will choose eighth column, sixth row. It's going to be green accent for 50% darker, or darker 50%. So we're going to choose this option right here, green accent for darker 50%. Okay, the next thing we want to do is copy the formulas and number formatting from K4 and apply it to the range K5 through K8. So let's go ahead and do this one a little bit different than the other one that we did before. So we're going to select K4. We're going to press Control C on the keyboard to highlight it. I'm going to uh, select the area that I want to paste it to, which again is K5 through K8. I'm going to press Control V on the keyboard, Control V as in Victor. And instead of right clicking and using that pop out menu or this button over here, I'm just going to go over here to the paste option. So as soon as I paste it, if I don't do anything else, I should have this little paste option menu right there. I can go ahead and click on that and I'll see that whole paste option, same as if I was to right click. I'm going to choose the option there, formulas and number formatting. And then we press escape to get rid of the marching ants. Again, in Excel, there's a ton of different ways you can accomplish your goal. So you can do the right click and see all the paste options. You can go over there, see all your paste options, however you want to do it. Okay, question number 10. We're going to go down to C12, and we're going to do a formula that divides the value in C9 by the value in I9. So let's go ahead and go equals, and then we're going to click on the value in C9. We're going to use the division symbol and then click on the cell I9. And then we want to make I9 an absolute cell reference. So I'm going to press F4 on the keyboard. We see that we get the dollar sign before the I, dollar sign before the 9. So that is an absolute cell reference. So again, we have equals. 
C9 divided by I9, and I9 is an absolute cell reference. Then we go ahead and press enter. Then we're going to go ahead and click on cell C12 and fill it across to G12. Okay, we're going to go ahead and click on cell H15 here, and we're going to go insert tab on the ribbon over here to the spark lines group, and then we'll click on column. We're going to click on the column option. Again, we get the box that pops up. Location is filled out because we started there, uh, started by selecting that cell. What data range do we want to put in here? Um, we go ahead and select C15 through G15. C15 through G15, then we go ahead and click OK. We now have our spark line or spark column. We're going to display high points and low points by going, uh, make sure we click the spark line tab on the ribbon, then go over here to the show group. High points, low points, we're going to add a check mark to both of those. Okay, we're going to fill the spark line down to I23. So we're going to grab the fill handle, drag it down to I23. We're going to release, and then again, we're going to choose the autofill options, and we're going to choose fill without formatting. Again, just so we keep our table intact. Next, we're going to click on cell I15. We're going to copy and paste just the formulas to the range I16 through I23. So control C on the keyboard. Again, clicked on I15, control C on the keyboard. I'm going to highlight the range I16 through I23. I'm going to press control V as in Victor. And then I'm going to look over here at the paste options that pop up there. Click on that. And I'm going to choose the option formulas. So I'm going to choose this option right here that says just formulas. And then I'll press escape to get rid of my marching ants. Okay, we're going to do a couple things to this chart right here. We're going to change it to a part. Uh, we're, we're going to change it to a pie chart, and then we're going to change the chart title, and then we're going to add data labels. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on the chart. I'm going to click on chart design on the ribbon, and I will go over here to the type group, and I'm going to click on the button change chart type. I click on this button right here, change chart type. Type it told us to change it to as a pie chart, so I'm going to make sure I select pie chart. And I think we're going to choose this first option out of out of the uh, possible types up here. So we're just going to choose this plain pie chart option out right here, and then we're going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to change the chart title, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the chart title. I'm going to triple click to select all the text there, and then I'm going to click backspace, and I'm going to type in average orders per month average orders per month okay and then i'm going to add data labels so i'm going to click over here on the chart i'm going to click the chart elements button and then i'm going to click on the little flyout menu here so this little arrow to the right of the data labels i'm going to go ahead and click on that i'm going to choose the option outside end okay so that's everything we have for this i hope you guys enjoyed this activity have a wonderful week bye